Today I want to talk to us about, for a few minutes today, about what are our priorities in life? What is important to us? How we look at things that are important to us. What makes them important to you? Now, what might be important to you may not be the same thing that's important to me, but they are important. One of the things that is a priority in my life, kind of a pet peeve, you could say, is being on time. I have lived my life for the past 30 plus years in my appraisal, real estate appraisal profession, by a calendar. In my calendar day, some days are on the hour or more often appointments where people are waiting for me to come to their house and to look at their property. And I feel it's a priority to me because I feel they have set aside time for me. I need to be on time. And I don't say this boastfully, but I haven't kept track, but I don't think that there's less than 5% of the appointments I've had, and I have hundreds and hundreds of appointments a year that I'm ever late to. I don't know about you, but going to, I'm going to pick on the doctors here in the house today, is a pet peeve of mine. Because I've had a lot of appointments here the last several months, and they ask you to be there 15 minutes early, and I comply. The appointment's at 10 o'clock. Sometimes by 11, I get called into the doctor's office. Who's more important, my time or his? I remember several years ago, we were going to change uh, internet and TV providers in our house, and so I made it, they made an appointment with me to be there between 3 and 5 o'clock in the afternoon. A wide window, I'll give them grace. Not a problem. I ended my day early, I went home and I waited. Five o'clock came, nobody showed up. 5.30 came, no one showed up. I finally called, they said, oh, they're gonna be there in 30 or 45 minutes. Seven o'clock came, no one showed up. I called again, oh, they're gonna be there. Our three to five o'clock appointment turned into them showing up at our house at 8.30 in the evening. Who is important? What is important to us? Whose time is more valuable? And who are you to tell me that my, your time is more valuable than my time? Now, any doctors that are here today, I will never make an appointment at your office because <laughs> you probably show me whose time is more important. Why do we make appointments? If we make appointments, aren't they to be kept? That's a side pet peeve of mine. I get to a house and they don't show up. And so finally, 15 minutes after the appointment, I try to call the numbers and sometimes you go, oh, I forgot. I'm still at work. Can we reschedule for another day? Seriously. You forgot? The topic I'm going to share with you today I have shared with this church one other time. I have tweaked it to today a little bit. But I realize that I should have a glass partition in front of me when I give this. No one brought any tomatoes or eggs into the church today, did you? Oh, someone's looking. When I gave it several years ago, I will admit that it was the most controversial sermon message I ever gave in this church. What it means is I stepped on some toes. I'm not meaning to step on toes. I'm asking, what priorities do we have in life? What are they? Because I think that it reflects in the things that we do. So if you don't want your toes stepped on, I will understand if you just want to put your feet up on the, you know, on the back of the pew in front of you, get them off the floor. I promise I won't step on them too hard. But... I wonder sometimes, is, is Sabbath church important to us? Is coming together and worshiping together, is it important? And if it is important, then what should you as the consumer, and we may change that 
title as we go through here, okay? As you picture yourself as being the consumer of Sabbath, what should you get out of church? Is it worth your time to come here and to be here on Sabbath morning? In the book of Testimonies, Volume 9, this comment was made, and realize this book was written in the 1800s, okay? But look at it really carefully, what it says. In the cities today, where there is so much to attract and to please, would anyone deny that around us today, in the world today, there's a lot to attract and uh, please our eyes and, and grab our attention, right? It's out there, right? It says, the people can be interested by no ordinary efforts. Put forth extraordinary efforts in order to arrest the attention of the multitudes, of the church family. Make use of every means that can be possibly devised for causing truth to stand out clearly and distinctly. Remember when this was written. If it was written, it was important way, way back then. Think how much more important it is today. There's one thing that I've never asked to be done here in this church. At this point, I don't ever plan doing it. I don't ask for a basket to be put out in the foyer and ask for everyone to put their cell phones in it before they come into the sanctuary. Things that arrest and take our attention. But I think that if church is a priority, the phones won't be a priority. Now some, just for a disclaimer, we always make excuses, don't we, for things? Some of you will notice that sometimes sitting here, I take my phone out and I look during song service at something. If you want to see what I looked at, I'd be glad to show you. I was looking at our church's YouTube channel to see how the broadcast is going. And I do that often because sometimes people ask, why did this look this way or that way or something? And so I'll look sometimes. But if this statement is true, should it be a priority to us? Should be what we provide at church and Sabbath school arrest the attention of everybody so it makes them want to be here? I believe it should. Does that mean that we have... Remember the plexiglass that's here so you can't throw anything at me? Okay, remember? Does that mean that we have a band up here and we have a lot of music and, you know, and, and praise songs and all that kind of stuff and that we have the children's divisions and we have big theatrical Sabbath school lessons and all this stuff? No. But if Sabbath is important to us, why is it important to us? Or why should it be? So let's look at a couple of verses. Because I think in these two sets of verses I want to look at today, we're going to find that this is a special day. And not just to us, but to, it should be to everyone. Genesis chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. End of the creation story, right? We've all read this verse. And on the seventh day, God ended all of his work and rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. Show me in the first six days where he used these words that are underlined, these three words that are underlined. On that seventh day, he blessed the seventh day, he sanctified the seventh day, and he rested on the seventh day. God was just tired out. It had been a long week, so he needed to lay down and take a nap. No. No way. But when he created this space of time, He did three things to it that were very important. He blessed it, he sanctified it, and he rested on it. Let's don't stop there. Let's go to Exodus chapter 20. Everyone knows what chapter, what segment of the Bible we're reading now, right? Exodus chapter 20 is where the Ten Commandments are given. The fourth commandment, starting at verse 8 through 11, starts with what word? I don't know about you, but when my wife told me, remember our anniversary, I never forget April 21, except for one year. She also forgot. Another story, another time. Okay? 
we just praise God that he blocked her mind also at the same time blocked mine. Um, he says, remember. Does God change his mind? No. So when he said remember once, do you think he means remember forever? I think so. Remember the Sabbath day. What Sabbath day? The seventh day. Keep it, keep it holy. I didn't underline that one. It should have been. Keep it holy. Six days shall you labor and do all your work, but the seventh day the Sabbath of the Lord your God, in it you shall do no work, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your manservant, your male, female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. goes on. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth. Takes us back to when? Creation. Same God that created this world, wrote the Ten Commandments, made the heavens and the earth, and all that's in them. And what did he do? He rested, he blessed, and he made it hallow. Is it special? All right. Doing good so far? Should it be a priority in our life and our relationship with Christ? Should it? Okay, now I'm going to ask you to lift your feet off the floor because I'm going to step really hard. Okay? I'm going to step really hard. I'm not judging anyone here. But if Sabbath and Sabbath worship is a priority, do you think that we'll be at church on time? I just want you to think about it a little bit. If your relationship with God is a priority and he has blessed and sanctified and made hallow a special day, do you think it should be special to us? Okay. You can put your feet down. I won't step quite so hard for the rest of the time, but it might be there. All right? Now, the majority of us or at work, or at school, between 7 and 8 o'clock every day, five days a week. And my guess is you're on time. Now, I did have a doctor's appointment the other day at 8 o'clock, and I was sitting at her office at 10 tell, or 5 tell, actually, I walked in, and she walked in three minutes after 8. I wasn't real happy about that, but she got me right in. Most of us do get there in time, right, for work and school. There is no magical time. In fact, if you want to go back, um, the title of my sermon was Don't Come Before 10. Because I simply ask people, what if God came, we were starting church at 10 o'clock then, Sabbath school at 10 o'clock. What if God came before 10 o'clock on Sabbath morning? Would you be here? Now, this week when I was trying to rewrite part of this, something came to my mind. I don't have any biblical proof for this except for one verse. I do not believe that Jesus will return on Sabbath. Okay? Dale Morrison said that. The Bible doesn't say that, but I base it on Matthew 24, 20, where it says, pray that your flight not be on the Sabbath or in the winter. I'm not going to say he's not coming in the winter. <laughs> I don't think he'll come on Sabbath by that verse. That's my own opinion. If he comes Sabbath morning, great. I'll praise and worship him. I won't question him. Priorities. What are they? There's several stories, parables in the Bible that talk about this, don't they? Ten virgins? The bridegroom? As I understand it, that is about the second coming and about being prepared, not being prepared. Five were prepared and made it a priority to be prepared, and the other five, they knew it was going to happen, but they didn't really, wasn't really a priority because they really didn't plan for an extended wait, and they missed out. Priority?
I'm challenging each of us this morning to ask ourselves this question. Is God a priority in your life? I shouldn't say this, but my car is unlocked. You want to go look at my car and come back? Someone want to go down there and look at my car you, and come back and tell me what my prior, priority is in my car. What do you think you're going to see? Golf clubs. Golf clubs are a priority. My Bible's not there because my Bible's here. <laughs> okay? You will find golf clubs in my trunk. Golf hats in my, in my rear window. Golf is important to me. God is more important. In fact, this week once, when I was out on the golf course one day, it was one of these days where it was just me and another friend of mine, and there was, it was a, just the perfect day. The weather was perfect. The sun was shining, and there was no one else out there we could see. And I said, this is what my sanctuary is. I tell my church this all the time. This is where I come to communicate with God. Is God a priority in our life? If someone looks at your life, your daily activities, if someone looks at where you are this morning, and they know you're an Adventist, you're a Christian, do they know where you are? I can say this, and not, not to boast, but every one of my golfing friends know where I am right now this morning. Because even though that golf is a priority and important in my life, they know it is of greater importance. Because they even ask, well, you can come play in the afternoon, can't you, on, Sabbath, or on Saturday? I said, no, I can't. What's a priority? Does your family and friends know that God is a priority in your life? It's, these are questions that we need to really understand. Evangelism, page 123, says this, we must do something out of the common cause of things that must arrest the attention. I don't see anyone yawning like this man in our church. Thank goodness I'm not boring you too much. I think I've grabbed your attention today because I see a lot of people kind of burning holes in me. That's okay. What do we do? Our church has several dis different aspects to it. We have our Sabbath school time. Praise God, we have the number of young people that are attending our church right now that we've revisited our children's division of Sabbath school. Parents, if your kids aren't here, they need to be here. Our magical time in our church is 1030. Good grief. 1030? I've been up for five and a half hours by then. Even on Sabbath. But we try to have a children's program. We're talking about reorganizing our children's programs. and We need your help with our children's programs. We need volunteers to lead out once in a while, not every week, once in a while. We have youth Sabbath school, young adult Sabbath school. Man, we, I, we were going along in there and all of a sudden I looked down, man, it was time to quit and we were just getting started. And I enjoy the young men that I get to teach in that Sabbath school class. We have the adult Sabbath school here. we got dedicated teachers that teach each week. And it is the best discussions our church has on Sabbath mornings in our Sabbath school classes. It's where we share with each other. We lift each other up. We learn about each other more. And then we have that church service time. I love our song leaders. And we have different song leaders every week. They choose different types of songs and different styles. And it feeds everyone. Not at once, I understand that. But we get fed. Fire the pastor if you don't like the messages. He'll move on if you need to be fed in a different way. He's not married to this pulpit or this church or to the leadership of this church. I'll move on any time. But if God is important to us, shouldn't it be a priority to us to provide the best that we can, the best that we can in these programs. 
and shouldn't it be important to us then that we come and we partake in it the best that we can? So let me ask this question. What is the purpose of Sabbath worship and experience, and who really is our audience? Who is it? Who is our audience when we come here on Sabbath morning? When I'm up here giving the message, who is my audience? When you're taking part in the Sabbath school lesson, who is the audience? When you're taking part in the fellowship meal, who is your audience? All focus of worship is the awesomeness of our God and Creator. He is our audience on Sabbath. Think about it. I'm not here, I'm here to give you a message, I understand that. Sabbath teachers are here to teach a lesson, but the ultimate person, who the audience who we're worshiping, is our awesome God, creator of this earth. Your Lord and your Savior. The one that loves you so much, he's willing to send his son to this earth to die just for you, whether you accepted him or not. Does that change your perspective of what church is? You see, are you a consumer or are you a contributor to church? Now, before you get, say, whoa, 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 wait, wait a minute. I'm not going to teach a lesson. I'm not going to give a sermon. I'm not going to play the piano. I'm not going to give special music. So you're saying if I'm not providing something, I can't be here? No, I didn't say that. Consumers are important, but consumers are also contributors by just sitting in the pews next to somebody else. You're not just filling a pew, a seat in a pew. You're filling a place. You're being a friend. You're being part of God's family. Did you hear that sermon recently? Being part of God's family? If you didn't, go to YouTube. Last Sabbath, it's there for you. We are family. I am strange. I understand I am strange in many, 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 many ways. But a night sitting in my living room, not doing anything, having Lisa just sitting in the living room, we're together. We didn't have to talk, and I feel fulfilled. I know I'm strange. It's togetherness. God says, I want to be together with you in my house on my blessed, sanctified, hallowed day that I want you to remember. It's important. It's important to him. So do we become consumers or contributors? We are all contributors if we come here with a mindset, I'm going to bless somebody in our church today. It may be with just your beautiful smile. It may be with a hug. It may be with just a greeting. It may be, you know, I had a really bad week and you just sat beside me and showed you cared that way. You contributed to me that day. You understand? All right. We exist for God. God does not exist for us. We are here to praise Him. And we, it's our responsibility that we provide quality, we provide choices, we provide relevance to our church in all that we do, in all that we say. Psalms talks a lot about worship. In Psalms 27, 6, it says, Therefore we offer sacrifices joy in this tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Can you do that? Some of you are saying, oh man, you don't know what I sound like when I sing. Oh, trust me, nobody in this church knows what bad singing is than the leaders that stand here in front every Sabbath when I sing. Because when I sing, I sing like a frog, but I'm singing to God. And I don't care what you think of my voice, because I'm not singing for you, I'm singing to my God. 
right? Rich? Yeah. Rich and I are going to have special music in heaven. Be there. You won't want to miss it. Do you understand? I don't care how many notes you're off key. I don't care where you are. If you're singing to God, it does not matter. Make a joyful noise. What's joyful? Out of tune? No, joyful is my heart praising my God. Psalms 150, 1 through 6. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his great, great, excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of trumpet. Praise him with the lute and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and the dance. Praise him with the stringed instruments and the flutes. Praise the Lord with cymbals. Praise him with clashing cymbals. Hey, I like clashing cymbals. Cymbals got to be at the right time, right? No, clashing cymbals. Praise him. Let everything that has their breath. Did you, by the way, um, we've been here for about 20, 25 minutes. I haven't been talking that long, honestly. 20, 25 minutes is all I've been preaching here today. Has anyone breathed since I started? Has everyone breathed since I've started preaching here today? Okay. So you have breath, right? Everyone has breath. Let's praise the Lord. That's what his day is about. His day is about his crea- being our creator God. His day is about being our savior God. Our risen God. That's what this day is about. 1 Corinthians Chapter 9, verses 22 and 23 says, To the weak I became weak, that I might win the weak. It's going to sound like a weird verse to you, but just hang with me, okay? To the weak I became weak, that I might save the weak, or win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Now this I do for the gospel's sake, that I may be a partaker of it with you. We can't please everybody every week in our church. I understand that. But I think if you come consistently every one, two, or three weeks, you're going to find something in that in the service that's really going to minister to you. We need to adapt our church service from time to time to meet different needs. We've adapted for our ASL family. We've made changes up here. We continue to make changes, something you don't even recognize or see to make it better for those. And we do have ASL viewers and listeners on Sabbath morning and during the week that do see this. It's not just for the three or four that sit here. We have a, there, excuse me, there's an ASL audience out there that's watching on Sabbath mornings. We've adapted. I haven't done it for a long time, but I have done some big swings in just the church service at all to arrest the attention of our church. Maybe I need to do it again sometime of some some form. Switch things up a little bit. Make you thinking what you're going to see is not maybe what you're going to see when you come to church. Friends, here's the bottom line. I believe that God is coming back soon. This clock here in this picture shows it's just a few minutes before 12. I don't know when that clock is going to strike the midnight hour and Jesus is going to tell his angels to blow the trumpets and the earth is going to shake and we're going to see in the sky a cloud the size of a hand and it's going to get closer and closer and brighter and brighter and it's going to be Jesus himself coming back to take us home. I don't know when that's going to happen. But with every breath I take, every Sabbath that I can come except for the worst of situations, I'm found in his house someplace worshiping him on his blessed day. 
Why? Because it's a priority in my life. Because He is a priority in my life. And I hope He's your priority in your life. You've already shown it by being here today. As a church family, we can do many things. As a church family, and we understand family, all of us contributing, right? We can do things that will arrest, grab the attention from the youngest to the oldest in our church. But we have to do it as family. If I stepped on your toes, I'm sorry today. But I'm not. Because I want you to think. I challenge you to make God a priority in your life. And be where He is as a family every opportunity you get.